Hey guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. My name is David. Today, I was out here getting everything together, trying to wash out some trays. You see all the trays I got stacked out here. Um, trying to wash out some trays, getting ready to start our cool season crops. You can see I got all these trays here. I still got to, still got to bleach those guys and uh, <clears throat> take inventory on how many trays we've actually got to work with. You can see here, I've got some beets started. We got yellow beets and red beets. Uh, two different kinds of cabbage. I got some typhoon and some dead on and I got two different kinds of cauliflower there I think one of them is amazing and the other one is uh, snow crown and It's mid-january here in North Carolina So we're I mean it's a little early to be putting out cabbage and things of that nature, but you know I started them in December thinking that uh, we We're gonna have the kind of winter that we normally have but here lately to be honest. It's been pretty cold um we're getting up in the mornings, low 20s, and uh, we've already had one uh, winter weather event last week. We had a lot of sleet and a lot of uh, freezing rain, put about an inch or two on the ground. No real issues, but uh, this coming weekend, they're calling for accumulation of three to six inches of snow. So, <clears throat> you know, we're not used to that kind of weather around here, especially. So, I'm going to walk down here in the garden, kind of give you an idea of what we've been working on. Um, I gotta go let the chickens out anyway for a little while. But as you can see, we've got our cool season plot here and here. We got pretty much, you yeah, know, I say dist in, but still got a little bit of work to do. But I've been adding this compost. You can see I got piles of it spread out here. I got a bunch over there. So I've been putting this compost in. <clears throat> and what I'll do is let it kind of sit there for a week or so. And I'm gonna get the, uh, the big rotor tiller on the tractor and come in here and blend all this stuff in and uh, get it ready to plant for spring. Now, normally I don't even attempt to start putting stuff in the ground till you know, late March because, you know, springtime temperatures around here are just freaking crazy. I mean, one day it'll be 70 degrees, 80 degrees, the next day it'll be 30 degrees of snowing. So, um, kind of give you an idea of what we got left out here. We got mustard greens, which the weather has taken its toll on it, you can see. Uh, mustard is a pretty hardy winter plant, but even the temperatures we've had lately, I mean, you can see, you can just look down there and see the frost damage on them, especially on the red mustard. Um, you can see it's it's been burnt pretty bad, and I still got some turnips out here. I got to get out of the garden. Anyway, um, I'm going to let these chickens out. Y'all ready to go? Ready to go? Come on, Bleachy. So, it's all the white chickens they hit it towards the woods. Every time they hit towards the woods. When I get eggs, that's a little questionable. Out of the laying boxes, that's where I throw them over there, edge of those woods, and they've learned that there's eggshells over there in the edge. That's where they go. I know, I know. You might as well enjoy it while it lasts. But yeah, but I let them out in the evenings while I'm around here. I used to leave them out during the daytime while I was at work, and uh, I got to seeing a lot of feather, and I got a lot, missing a lot of chicken, so I only let them out while I'm down here now. Anyway, guys, get back over here to the garden. We, uh, we are going to be starting our cabbage and our cauliflower and our um, broccoli here pretty soon. I've got three, ty three types of broccoli that I'm going to be starting this year for spring. Imperial, Marathon, and Green Magic. Um, those are the three types that I'm going to start for spring. And uh, kind of do a trial to see what, what we like to grow. I grew Imperial last year during the spring, and it did great. I mean, the plants got huge, though. I mean, they're huge. I'm talking almost four feet. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to do a trial and see which one we want to grow for the spring. Then in come fall. We'll grow another one, see which one we like for the fall. Um, same with cabbage. I grew bobcat in the fall, and I grew um, stonehead in the spring. So this year, we're growing typhoon and bobcat in the spring, and then we'll see what we want to grow for the fall. See, you know, I guess it is a luxury for us because we can grow cabbage in the spring and in the, in the fall. Broccoli, same with broccoli, but... You know, we get two chances to try different varieties, especially two different um, climate. Well, I say climates, but two different um, 
weather situations early spring i mean we're going to be planting cabbage when temperatures are going to you know could dip down into the 30s or even into the 20s and have a frost or a light freeze um, i know that's not good on young plants but you know once they get a little bit of mature maturity and a little bit of root structure it shouldn't hurt them so we grew cabbage and broccoli in this plot last year and we grew it on i think it was two foot three foot row spacing this year we're doing things a little different we're going to grow cabbage and broccoli in 30 inch beds 50 feet long and we're going to split them 18 inches apart kind of cross pattern back and forth back and forth then you look back on some of the videos you've seen i did that in the fall so give you guys a little bit of update our elephant garlic is up and those few 70 degree days that we had it is actually doing pretty good and some of the leaves have a lot of frost damage but i mean that should go away it shouldn't be a problem and the uh, chestnut red you see this garlic here it actually came in pretty good and uh almost what i consider 100 percent germination i mean maybe just a little less but as far as looking down the road it looks full so i'm happy um onions white onions or sweet onions and then we got red onions and you know i apologize the garden's a mess it's been raining a pretty good bit um we got a lot of rain sunday but my main focus for the next couple weeks anyway are going to be on this plot here you see and that plot over there which i can get eight 30 inch beds in this plot so that's enough to plant um everything that i'm talking about planting for the spring um the other plot we're going to get it ready because i'm not necessarily you know out of planting kale or anything else like that for the spring um i did plant kale for the winter and it did good it did really good i planted um lacinato and some winter boar some red boar and things of that nature and they did great but i've got a rabbit problem now and i've never had a rabbit problem in the past i've always been able to grow things in the winter time and nothing ever bothered them but this year i could not grow lettuce and i could not grow kale i could but i mean the rabbits freaking annihilated it man last year it was a deer with my okra this year it was the rabbits with my kale and lettuce and all that good stuff so it's going to be something all the time you can believe that so here is what i have left of the collars that i planted now this is the top bunch collar top put 2.0 and if you remember right back on the collar video that i did we planted more heading and the top bunch now the more heading after the first couple frosts was absolutely delicious i mean it was it was great you know hands down now these top bunch collars i will say this they started out kind of slow but once they grew, they started growing and they got their their legs up on them they took off and the harder it the colder it got the better they taste now my wife cooked some for supper the other night and she commented that she actually thought that they were actually t more tender than the morse heading and you know it, if that's the case then then we know what we need to plant next year you will plant the morse heading for the early season and then we'll have a field full of top bunch for the late season now you can tell the chickens are enjoying them too but you know these are some of the ones that we've already harvested on and there's just little you know little bit left out here that i mean they're not hurting nothing they i'm happy for them to get a hold to it i'm glad they're utilizing it um we still got some out there that we're going to be putting up in the freezer matter of fact she was putting some up yesterday and uh, we're trying to get a hold because it's fixing to get so cold that even the collars won't survive you can see how the leaves are already getting a purple tinge to them here over there has killed some of them <clears throat> but i still got some good plants on that end and that's where we've been working to to get those out all right guys so here's a project i've been working on a little bit of a time at a time um i got a project i'm working on up at the farmhouse and i'm just about done with it so i'll be able to focus more attention out here but you can see back here behind me this little area of trees there's a spot there it's about a 40 by 70 i think <clears throat> is what i'm fixing to clear off and guess what we're getting ready to build us a greenhouse um that's a bootstrap farmer kit there and it's for a 20 foot wide and what i'm planning on building is a 20 by 60 nursery um on top of being able to offer produce uh, during the you know uh, growing season we want to also be all, be able to offer plants tomato plants pepper plants uh you name it cabbage plants broccoli whatever 
we also want to be able to offer plants to our customers also and uh i got a little bit cut in here i got it cut from one side to the other and i've got a little bit of a gap here i got a little bit here and here and here and you can see i've been piling this stuff up on a trailer <clears throat> as soon as i get all the trees off of it i'm gonna bring the skid steer home and we're gonna start knocking the stumps out of it so you can see i mean that little bit there cut up ready to be hauled off i was gonna burn it all but i don't want to burn it right here where i'm fixing to put my goat barn anyway so now you know what we've been up to like i said it's mid-january here in north carolina so we've got another you know month and a half two months of what i consider winter weather and then things will start turning around here i mean it'll still get cold don't get me wrong but we'll start being able to work outside a little bit more it'll be wet i mean we're, we're just now getting into what i consider our wet season but uh yeah but that's okay uh we get this greenhouse up we don't have to worry about it being wet anyway if you guys haven't already reach over here in this right hand corner and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you get notified every time i put out a video as always guys i appreciate you stopping by thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one